What's up creative gamers? I'm Mark and I'm back with some more Dragon Quest content. This video is all about Dragon Quest 12. <laughs> Hold on, has that even been announced yet? Sort of. I'm going to share with you what we know about the game so far, my predictions, and my wish list for Dragon Quest 12. This should be fun. Let's start with what we know publicly about DQ12 as of the making of this video. Series executive producer Yu Mayaki confirmed in June 2019 in a Square Enix stream that Dragon Quest XII is in early development stages. On January 1, 2020, Yuji Horii published a tweet of all things confirming that production of DQ12 was underway, but the game is still a little while ahead. At the 2020 Dragon Quest X Fall Festival, Horii teased that next year, Dragon Quest will celebrate its 35th anniversary. I believe we'll be able to make all sorts of announcements. So basically, all we know about DQ12 is that it's in the works. If the devil is in the details, then Square Enix has been a perfect angel. With 2021 being the series' 35th anniversary, and every last bit having now been squeezed out of DQ11, the release of more information about 12 seems eminent. I'm sure announcements will be peppered in throughout the year about Dragon Quest XII, but the most likely time to get news about 12 is at the Square Enix annual press conference that's scheduled for May 27th. This just so happens to be the same day Dragon Quest was originally released in Japan in 1986. There's also the new Square Enix Presents series, which premiered on March 18th, 2021, and the company has confirmed more of those are on the way this year, making it another likely candidate for Dragon Quest 12 announcements. Now that we're all caught up on the little bit that there is to know about Dragon Quest XII so far, I'm excited to dive into my predictions and wish list. Hori stated in a 2017 interview with Faminko Gamer that Dragon Quest XI was originally planned to be an open world game, but that was deprioritized to focus on the story. For Dragon Quest XII, I do expect them to move more in the direction of an open world experience. Hori is a big Zelda fan and has mentioned his love for Breath of the Wild, which has set a high standard for open world games. With DQ11, it did have a large map, but it was very restricting and linear in terms of where you could go and exploration. The overworld map's connection to the specific locations within it was arbitrary. In 12, I expect that disconnect will be removed. Everything you see in the overall world map will seamlessly reflect the layout of specific regions. This would be in line with most past Dragon Quest games, be less confusing, creates possibilities in exploration, and enhances the sense of discovery. Much as in past Dragon Quests, enemy strength and geographical barriers will likely be used to foster where the player can go within the world, especially at the beginning. Then at some point in the game, something will happen to really open things up, such as finding the ship or removing the barriers in some way. To further allow for greater freedom in exploration, they should plan where enemies appear in the overworld more carefully. Ever since Dragon Quest IX, random encounters have been removed, but enemies appear all over the place and constantly need to be avoided if you're trying to explore or get somewhere. Having more strategic and less crowded monster spawns would allow players to focus on the world rather than avoiding enemies and would make encounters more exciting. It's practically a guarantee that DQ12 will have side quests. 11 did have them, but they would always follow the same structure of talking to someone, going on a fetch quest, and returning to the requester to complete it. In 12, we'll still have the traditional objective-based side quests from NPCs, but we'll also get a variety of other quests with more practical rewards. I really like what they did in Ghosts of Tsushima, where they included a variety of optional side quests peppered throughout the world, each variation having a different reward. For example, if you find fox dens, you unlock slots for enhancements to your katana, and if you find hot spring baths, you increase your maximum health and get a free peep show. This could be applied to Dragon Quest XII in myriad ways to fill in and really take advantage of a larger open world and take that sense of exploration and discovery to the next level. Perhaps some character stats could be increased from completing these side quests rather than from simply leveling up. Or they could unlock enhancements or slots to apply enhancements to equipment. Speaking of a seamless overworld, 
enhancements to the battle transitions to and from the overworld are definitely coming. Dragon Quest XI did a great job of this with the battles taking place in the actual environments, but I'm willing to bet that they're going to take it a step further. Eleven had hard cuts for the start and end of battles as well as an explicit line indicating the edge of the battlefield. Smoothing out the battle transitions and making the battlefield borders more ambiguous would go a long way in creating a sense that it's all taking place in a large intricate world. Of course, Square Enix will leave the battles as generally traditional JRPG affairs. Turn-based combat is synonymous with the series and fans would freak out if they steered too far from that. I've got some ideas and predictions to shake up the combat without compromising the old school style. Most games in the series have some sort of gimmick to temporarily intensify character stats in battle. Eleven has the pep system, eight has the tension, and so on. Twelve will have something along these lines as well, but what? If they do go more towards an open world experience, perhaps a feature from that style of game would translate well here. What comes to mind is stamina which could be retrofitted to work in a more traditional way on the field and implemented as a battle mechanic in the heat of a fight. Tactical RPGs like Fire Emblem and the PSP hidden gem Jean d'Arc, shown here, rely on character placement in battle to influence the outcome of attacks. Dragon Quest XI introduced free movement of characters within the battlefield, albeit to no particular benefit, it will be great to see 12 expand on this and offer a benefit for strategic character placement. Square Enix has even been using this in their mobile game Dragon Quest Tact, perhaps to gauge market reactions for potential tactical battle features in 12. Benefits could be extra damage for certain types of attacks or inflicting status ailments, all based on your position in relation to the targeted enemy. Character placement could also influence if fleeing battle is successful and an enemy's ability to attack your party members. I would love to see terrain and elements on the battlefield become a factor too. For example, if there's sand in the terrain, wind-based attacks would have a chance to blind or dazzle targeted characters. One of the most rewarding parts of Dragon Quest for me is landing a critical hit. How it's worked to this point is based on probability, so every attack performed has a pre-established chance of being a crit, and whether it lands critical or not is based on that formula and is ultimately up to the role of the invisible digital dice. This makes me wish that there were strategic or skill-based actions I could take in battle to increase my chance of landing a crit in real time, rather than relying solely on the stat sheet. Games like Legend of Dragoon and the Paper Mario series come to mind. These are turn-based RPGs that use timing-based button presses to increase the damage done by an attack, commonly referred to as timed hits. How they basically work is while the animation for your selected attack is being performed, you have a specific fraction of time to press an action button, and if timed correctly, the attack is improved. Usually the timing is just as the attack is connecting with the enemy. I find these timed hits to be very satisfying, particularly in games like Super Mario RPG that don't overly complicate them. Admittedly, I am already pressing buttons during Dragon Quest attacks as though they were timed hits anyway. I'd suggest implementing timed hits into Dragon Quest XII battles that, if performed successfully, give a considerable increase to the probability of landing a critical hit. It wouldn't necessarily be a required game mechanic and still wouldn't guarantee a critical, but satisfying enough when it lands to make mastery of it worthwhile. Those who prefer a more passive battle experience can still rely on the stats this way. Seeing this or similar actions result in a crit would make an already satisfying result even more rewarding and further engage the player without compromising the JRPG battle mechanics that Dragon Quest fans like myself hold dearly. As much as I love the battle theme from every Dragon Quest game, the same tune can become tiresome after hundreds of battles over many hours. Remember the bazaar of Skyloft and Skyward Sword? Each store within has essentially the same song, but with variations in tempo and instruments to make it match the theme of each shop. Dragon Quest XII could take this idea and apply it to the battle theme, having variations of the theme to fit the area where the battle is occurring. A battle in some grassy hills could use the standard theme, while battle music in other terrain or areas could tie in with aspects of that location. Same can be said for the overworld theme. Since Dragon Quest locations are often based on real places, it wouldn't be challenging to implement variations and instruments unique for each. 
In a poll I put out recently on my channel, I asked, what aspects of a Dragon Quest game are most important to you? The most popular answers, the characters, and the story. Although I loved the story in Dragon Quest XI, I felt that text and cutscenes were the dominant factor in the game and would love if it were more closely balanced with other aspects of the game such as crafting, exploration, and battles. I think this was best accomplished in Dragon Quest VIII as I felt a very strong connection to those characters. Four seems to be the magic number of party members, but if there are less playable characters, variety could be an issue, and to alleviate this, it will be fun to see a class system implemented like it was in Dragon Quests III, VII, and IX. Speaking of IX, it's the only game in the series, I think, where all the weapons, armor, and accessories you equip are directly reflected on each character's design. It would be awesome to see that feature come back and not be limited to only certain appearance-altering outfits. There will surely be many non-playable characters again in 12. In 11, all the NPCs had bulky dialogue, but they also often had these little word bubbles appear over them with a snippet of what they had to say. In 12, I'd like to see these word bubbles utilized as an alternative to long text blocks to reduce the amount of non-essential dialogue and help prioritize who to talk to in the game. Lately, there's been a lot of attention towards the Erdrick timeline. The Erdrick trilogy, Dragon Quest 1, 2, and 3, has been re-released on Switch, and of course 11 is deeply connected to Erdrick as well. I'd bet that 12 was gonna mix this up. I expect it to tie into the Zenithian timeline, which hasn't been revisited for a while. This would even be an opportunity for Square Enix to re-release the Zenithian trilogy of Dragon Quests 4, 5, and 6 to build hype and awareness for 12. We've seen the Dragon Quest Mainline series release on the best-selling console for their initial releases over the years, dating all the way back to Dragon Quest 1 through 4 on the NES, 5 and 6 on the SNES, 7 jumped ship over to the PlayStation, 8 on the PS2, 9 on the DS, 10 on the Wii, and 11 on the PS4. With the Switch having a huge install base and the PS5 off to a slow start, I expect 12 will be made for the Switch initially to maximize the sales potential. Later, we'll get ports or enhanced versions for PS5 and possibly Xbox Series X depending on its install base and Dragon Quest XI's sales performance on the Xbox One. From a recent poll on the community page of my channel, people seem to generally agree, with 55% of voters saying the Switch is the most likely console to host Dragon Quest XII's initial release. Whatever it does end up releasing on, one thing is for sure, and that is that we've got a bit of a wait on our hands before we get it. That stinks, but as games become larger and more detailed, they just take longer to develop. Based on series trends, we can expect about two and a half years between its official reveal and a release, and then an additional year to translate and release in the West. So if an announcement comes in May 2021, Expect it to hit shelves in North America around November 2024. But I'm sure as always, it'll be worth the wait. So those are my predictions for Dragon Quest XII, but those are only the opinions of one fan. I want to know your predictions and wishes for Dragon Quest XII. Let the community know down in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. I hope you'll join the creative community by following Creative Games on YouTube, Twitch, and Instagram. Remember to spice up your life with a variety of gaming experiences, and we'll see you next time.